Hi guys, in this video we're going to review very briefly uh, this unit, which is Introduction to Metaheuristics. The first thing we did was to see the kind of problems for which metaheuristics are uh, often useful. And these are combinatorial optimization problems. These are problems that involve um, discrete objects and in which we have to find um, an optimum solution from a finite set of candidate solutions. And they appear in many different contexts. And, and one important thing is that most of the methods, the conventional methods that we've studied in this degree up until now, are often not useful to find good solutions for these problems. And that's why we're going to learn uh, about metaheuristics that are useful to, to deal with these um, problems. We saw then that metaheuristics are a kind of approximate methods. And so that, that means that they do not guarantee giving us the optimum solution. But um, the silver lining is that they usually give us satisfactory solutions, solutions that are good enough in very little time. There are also general purpose methods um, as opposed to heuristics. Metaheuristics in general can be applied to a very wide range of, of different uh, problems. After that, we saw a classification of metaheuristics. We saw that we can classify them according to different criteria. Uh, some of them are inspired by nature, some are not. Some use memory, some do not. Uh, some are deterministic, other, most of them are stochastic, some are iterative, most of them, but there are some that are greedy. And the most common criterion to classify them is whether they are single solution based or population based. Single solution based means that at any point in time, the meta heuristic is working with just one solution. While in a population based meta heuristics, we've got a whole army of different solutions working at the same time. And, and uh, we can use information from the whole population to create the, the next population. Often single based solutions tend to focus more on on intensification of the search while uh, population based uh, solutions tend to explore more the the search space and these these are actually two really important strategies that we have to to find um, an an optimum in in any problem these are exploration and exploitation. So to find uh, a good solution, we have to keep a, a good balance between exploring a wide range of the search space so we don't miss any good areas. But once we have found uh, an area that looks promising, we should intensify our efforts in, in that area. And, and it's always good to find a good balance between these two conflicting strategies. And as a matter of fact, most or nearly all meta heuristics can be seen as an elaborate combination of these two strategies, exploration and exploitation. Then we discussed different cases where uh, we should probably consider using meta heuristics. The first one is the complexity of the problem. If the problem scales very badly, like the traveling salesman problem, then we, we should consider meta heuristics. But also the specific size of the problem is relevant because sometimes we've got problems that scale pretty well, but the size is so big that we cannot use any exact methods. And for that kind of problems, large problems, we should also consider the use of meta heuristics. Another uh, situation where meta heuristics can be useful is when we, we have uh, a limitation of time. We, we have to provide a solution in a very limited amount of, of time. Then, then meta heuristics can be very useful. Even for continuous, for nonlinear continuous problems, um, where the landscape is very rugged, uh, meta heuristics can be useful because in those cases, conventional methods like gradient descent or or the conjugate gradient may fail to find a, um, 
uh, a global optimum. They, they may get stuck in, in local uh, optima. And finally, we also saw that sometimes we want to uh, optimize a function uh, of which we know hardly anything. Like if you want to optimize the uh, the result of some simulation and you really have no analytical formula for that function or, and, and you don't know anything, you, you can only evaluate it. And for that kind of situation, meta heuristics are also useful. Another important thing to bear in mind to see whether um, meta heuristics are useful or not is the goal, is the goal that we have. We saw that if we have a strategic goal, a, a design problem that we have to solve just once and the implications of this decision may be very big and, and, and may last for, for a long time, we should try to get the best possible solution, even if it takes us a, a, a long time to, to do so. On the other hand, for uh, operational problems, for control problems that you have to solve pretty much every day, very often, and the consequences are not that big, um, or that that uh, severe, then um, maybe you're more interested in finding solutions very quickly, even though those solutions may not be so good. So these two conflicting goals of uh, basic quality and speed, um, they're always going to be there, and and choosing where to position uh, yourself in, in this trade-off between quality of speed depends very much on, on the goal uh, you, you want to achieve. After that, we saw the two most basic um, algorithms in meta heuristics. The first one is random search. You basically pick up solutions at random and, and you take the best of them, pure exploration. And then we also saw a family of local search algorithms, which is the, the opposite. In local search focuses on exploitation, of uh, on intensification. Basically, you choose a solution, you look at its local neighborhood, and you find a, a, a neighbor, you select a neighbor in, in that local neighborhood, you move there, and you repeat the process of looking at the neighbors of that neighbor and, and, and selecting another one and, and moving there. Mm. In local search algorithms, it is crucial to define um, the neighborhood mapping appropriately. And appropriately means that it must have a strong locality. This means that neighbors should have similar quality in order uh, to, to local search to, to, perform, to perform well. Um, then we saw an example of how to use local search for um, the traveling salesman problem. And, and we, we, we saw that local search, the problem that it has is that it, it, it falls in a local optimum. And, and in the kind of problems we want to solve, the combinatorial optimization problems, um, the landscape is usually very rugged. It, it, it's, it, it has many local optima. So falling in a local optimum can be a, a major drawback of, of this method. So after that, we discussed different approaches to try to, to escape from local optimum. And some of them was starting from different initial conditions. So we, we explored different local optima. We saw also that another approach consists in changing the landscape of the problem by, for instance, adding noise to the objective function or maybe changing the neighborhood function. And finally, uh, accepting non-improving neighbors could be another useful approach from time to time in order to explore a wider um, uh, range of the search space, you may want to accept um, sometimes non-improving non neighbors. So to conclude, basically meta heuristics are a set of, of general purpose tools that uh, will give us usually good solutions, satisfactory solutions in, in very little time. And all of them involve this trade-off between exploration and, and exploitation. And with this, we finish this introduction and I look forward to seeing you in the next um, list of videos. See you later, guys. Cheers. Bye-bye.